over the past several weeks, I've been learning rigging in Blender. And in this video, I'm proud to present my rig for Gabriella, the protagonist for my upcoming indie game, Project Feline. It took me about two weeks to learn and make this rig, and it is definitely the most complex rig I've made by far. It's got bones for everything you'd need, like the arms and legs, body, a tail, ears, and even a facial rig, just to name a few. The bones can bend, squash, and stretch just like in an anime or a cartoon. And in this video, I'm going to be taking you guys behind the scenes into what went into this rig, its development process, and the problems and challenges I faced along the way. My name is Raymond, and welcome to the next installment of the Project Feline Devlog series. Let's get into it. The first rigs I ever made were a lot simpler than this one. Most of us out there learning 3D animation would have likely seen a rig more like this. Now this rig is comprised out of bones. Bones, sometimes referred to as joints, are standard in most 3D applications. And they're laid out in a hierarchical structure and can be moved, rotated and scaled. And these bones are what allow a character to come to life in animation. While this type of rig is simple, it's not always easy to use. Those who have used this kind of rig before would agree that getting the right pose or animation is really fidgety and difficult, and often makes animation a chore. If, however, you were to look at a rig from a company like Blizzard, you'd get a whole different story. If we take a look at this rig from the character Mei from Overwatch, we won't see any bones or joints at all, at least not on the surface. Instead, we see these groups of wireframe shapes. And these shapes are what many 3D artists refer to as animation controllers. Animation controllers come in quite literally all shapes and sizes and help to simplify the hierarchy of bones into a more usable rig. One common example of an animation controller is an IK handle, which allows you to do this instead of this. Now, while a rig of this type is a lot more pleasant to use, it takes a lot more time to set up. Luckily, I found some helpful tools to help me along my way. Now, the software I use, Blender, includes a free add-on called Rigify, which I use to help generate all of the complex controllers and constraints for Gabriella. Rigify starts by providing you with what's called a meta rig. This is made purely from standard bones, and it is used to help determine the size and proportions of your character. So this is where I started, configuring the meta rig to Gabriella's size and pose. Once set up, I then clicked generate. Rigify then used the dimensions from my meta rig to create the full rig, complete with spline-like controllers all throughout the spine, fingers, arms, legs, which lets me do things like this. The Rigify rig also included a full facial rig, allowing me to pose her jaw, her mouth, her eyes, and more. Seems simple, right? Well, not quite. Games with many characters have clever ways of saving development time. One cool thing to note is that if two characters are similar enough, they can be rigged to the same skeleton and by extension, use the same animations. At the time of recording, I'm still not sure how many characters will be present in the final version of Project Feline, but I wanted to future-proof this rig just in case. The tricky thing about Gabriella is that she isn't quite human. She's half feline, half human, and unlike a normal human, she has a few extra features like her ear and her tail to name a few. These things alone made it a lot harder for me to reuse this rig for a humanoid later on. So one of the reasons this rig took so long to make was that I tried to compartmentalize the rig. So that means one rig for the base humanoid, then separate rigs for the ears, whiskers, and tail. The first major challenge was getting the bones and controllers for those features there to begin with. Luckily, Rigify has some very solid preset rigs for both humanoids and animals. However, things become tricky when you try to use Rigify for things it just wasn't meant for. For example, Rigify doesn't have just a tail rig, but it does have a quadruped rig. So to get Gabriella's tail, I would generate the standard quadruped rig and then delete all of the other bones except for the tail, and then try and Frankenstein that into Gabriella's rig. This was a long process to get all of the features in, but eventually I did. I think the effort was well worth it, as each separate feature is rigged to the same quality as the base humanoid. And that lets me do cool things like this. 
I did, however, face one last problem in pursuit of creating a fully modular rig. Many 3D applications weren't designed to have one character rigged to multiple rigs, or armatures as Blender calls them. While it is common for multiple meshes to be rigged to one armature, it's simply not possible to have one mesh rigged to multiple armatures. To circumvent this problem, I made an effort to keep each rig as self-contained as I could up until the very end where I seamlessly combined them all together. While this wasn't the exact solution I wanted, reusing this rig is still very easy. Should I want to use this rig in animations for a normal humanoid, I can simply unparent the tail, ears, and whiskers, and it'll all work just fine. Once I had the full rig and controller set up, it was time to bind Gabriella's model to her skeleton. This process is called weight painting. Weight painting involves using vertex groups to assign a weight for each bone to each vertex of the model to tell the model how to deform. When weight painting, the model will turn into what looks like a heat map, where blue represents no influence, green represents partial influence, and red represents full influence. Luckily, Blender includes an option to assign weights automatically. These automatic weights gave me a good starting point, and most of my time after this was spent on posing the character, testing the weights, and fine-tuning. It took me several days to get the weights just right. Weight painting can be rather finicky, and I'd recommend using a graphics tablet if available. And after several weeks of learning Rigify in Blender, generating the right components for the rig, and weight painting Gabriella and her feline suit, I was left with the final result. It did take quite a while to get all this working, but I think it'll be worth the payoff. I imagine this character will be really fun to animate. And for me, if I can pose a character just as easily as a kid can pose an action figure, then I know I've done my job right. So there we have the rigging process for Gabriella. If you found this video helpful, be sure to leave a like. And if you wanna see where this character goes next, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss the next video where I talk about the animation process. I'm gonna be animating this in a very particular style, so I hope you guys will enjoy it. As always, feel welcome to let me know your thoughts in the comments. Huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who help fund the production of these videos. If you'd like to show your support, I'll leave my Patreon link below. And I'd like to thank the artists behind this month's wonderful Project Feline fan art submissions. I've been getting lots of wonderful fan art from you guys, and I really do appreciate the support. If you'd like to submit your own fan art and have it featured in one of these devlogs, be sure to join the community Discord link down below. And if you want to see more frequent updates in between uploads, you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.